So continuing our discussion of poroelastic elasticity, all poroelastic materials are viscoelastic materials. What is, does anybody know what, when you, when you see visco in front of anything, what that implies? Hmm? A change in properties as a function of what? Hmm? Viscosity is, one, is a good example um, of what I'm trying to suggest here, uh, but it's, it, it's just proving my, or it's another example. It's not the answer to the question. Yeah. Yeah, time. Time, time dependence, right? So anytime you, anytime you see any word that has visco in front of it, <coughs> understand that there's a time dependence, right? So viscoelasticity, viscoplasticity, viscosity, right? It, that's, that's exactly what, you know, sort of uh, is implied in, in viscosity. In fact, what are the units of viscosity? Per second, right? Yeah, it's got a it's got a time dependent thing. Um, just like in this in this example here, this is a family. I mean, it's a cartoon, but this is a, meant to imply a family of stress strain curves that, with increasing strain rate, so with increasing strain rate, uh, apparently the material gets stronger. So, what's the units of strain? It's unitless, right? So what's the units of strain rate? One per second, okay? What's another uh, common unit that's also one per second? Hmm? Frequency, hertz, right? And so uh, so that, that, that's also what's intended by this plot is that often the way we measure or infer material properties in the field is through sonic testing, right? We send a sound wave through it at different frequencies, and that's how we probe the material response. And so the, what this cartoon is meant to say is that you can actually have material properties that are frequency dependent. In this case, um, uh, what, what you have to be careful of is, is that you, or you, you have to understand this when you uh, do the test, and I'll, and I'll give you some examples or show you how how this is apparent in a second, that you have to understand that the response in material is frequency, is frequency dependent, and uh, be careful when you interpret the results, that's what I meant to say. So, uh, but another sort of uh, example uh, of what we mean by, you know, the, the material properties are affected by the fact that the, uh, you know, there's a viscous response due to the fact that the solid material that we're interested in modeling the deformation of has fluid in it, right? And if we think of our, my sponge example again, right? Uh, if, I, if I take my sponge as full of fluid and I squeeze it, and the sponge is very porous, obviously most kitchen sponges are very porous, if I squeeze it, then, then all the water will diffuse out of it, right? Uh, however, I take that same sponge and I were to wrap it in some kind of membrane where none of the fluid could actually escape. It could still move around inside the sponge, but it would, couldn't actually escape the exterior. If I were to squeeze it, uh, the material would have a different response. Uh, not only that, but the rate at which I squeeze it would affect the response. Right? So if I had a very, very porous sponge versus a, a very non-porous sponge, the, I would, I, you could literally feel the difference in your hand when squeezing the sponge at, at different speeds. At, you could feel the resistance to the fluid motion uh, cause a change in the in the reaction force in your hand, if you will. And this is all due to viscoelastic effects. <coughs> so this is a series of tests that were done in the lab. Uh, and this is a pressure volume response, right? So um, what is, the, in, a, in a plot like this, pressure vo versus volumetric strain, uh, 
what, what is the slope of these lines at birth? What material property? What's that? No. It's another modulus, but not Young's. Right? This is pressure. Pressure is a scalar which implies an equal force on each side, right? Volumetric strain is the is the sort of average volume change. Bulk yeah. Modulus. Bulk modulus. There you go. So the slope of these lines is a bulk modulus. And what you're looking at here is actually a bunch of load unload cycles. So if I trace one of them out, so the, the material was loaded, unloaded, loaded, unloaded, loaded, unloaded, like that. And the solid lines, the ones that I traced, are a result of direct measurement of the pressure volume response. So in this case, uh, I don't know exactly how this test was done, but likely the pressure was controlled by a fluid bath. I mean, so the, the sample was actually placed in a fluid with a membrane around it, and the, the pressure of that fluid was increased, cha changing the pressure. And, and so that's a, a sort of a boundary condition of the problem. You can monitor it. Yeah. Well, not, not ideally, but um, without rate effects, yes. So the fact that they don't have the same slope, this is, this is due to the viscoelastic property. So without rate effects, they would have the same slope. And in fact, the, the unload cycle here, well, let me finish my thought, and I'll, let me finish explaining what, uh, what the difference between what's, what's labeled as static and dynamic, okay? So, the, um, again, the way these are done in the, in the lab is this, the, one, the lines I trace were done by direct measurement. So, measuring the pressure and measuring the volumetric strain. And vol volumetric strain can be measured by placing strain gauges on the sample on all sides and, you know, and, and or possibly optically nowadays. Right? You can measure the volumetric change. I, I, it's likely at the time these tests were done, it was done with strain gauges on the samples. So those are direct measurements of the um, pressure volume response. Th the other lines, these little short, shorter blue lines, I mean, uh, shorter lines that I'll mark in blue, like this, were measured via sonic measurements. So they were done in the lab. Right? It's not like in the field. These were done in, on the same sample at the same time, what we'll call local measurements versus you know, sonic inferred measurements. And what you see is that the sonic inferred measurements correspond to the unload slope. Right? In most cases, they correspond to the unloaded slope because this is the actual response of the solid skeleton without the pore fluid effect, without the viscoelastic effect. And so uh, it just shows you that there is a difference in the measurement techniques, and you have to understand uh, when you interpret the results what, what you're really measuring due to the viscoelastic measure. Again, uh, more sort of frequency dependence information. So this is the elastic moduli measured from sonics log, sonic logs, where in this case, one of them was done uh, with uh, kilohertz uh, you know, uh, information versus, uh, it's uh, kilohertz versus megahertz. So this is, these were done with frequency in the in the uh, using the sonic measurements and these were with ultrasonic measurements and this is just for different uh, varying uh, viscosities of the of the pore fluid and again just uh, just showing you the difference uh, what am I saying this is uh, 
Th these lines are for uh, different viscosities. The, the solid dots are uh, sonic measurements. Uh, the, the ultrasonic dots, I mean, the, the I'm sorry, it's just two tests in the, in the ultrasonic range and the sonic range, <laughs> vice versa. Again, the point of them is just show that there is a difference between it, the response. I mean, this is the same sample tested with just two different measurement techniques. There's this thing that in Zoback's book he calls squirt theory or SQRT theory. Uh, I've never heard this term used in any mechanics literature ever. Um, but he lists some equations that talk about this transition from drained to undrained behavior. And I don't think the equations are that important. We're not going to use them. But what is important is these definitions of drained and undrained. These are pretty common. So uh, I'll start, I guess, in the reverse order, the, in, the, in the undrained limit. So in the, uh, in the undrained limit, this is, my this is my sponge example with the membrane around. So in the undrained limit, uh, the pore fluid has an effect on the solid skeleton, but the solid skeleton doesn't have an effect on the pore fluid diffusion. So in other words, if we actually solve the equations of pore mechanics, we have a conservation of momentum equation that has an effective stress in it, which includes the pore pressure. We have to solve that coupled with a pressure diffusivity equation. Right? And we have to solve them coupled. Right? So we solve the pressure diffusivity equation is conservation of mass. So we're solving simultaneously conservations of mass and momentum because they're coupled together through the pore pressure. In the, in the, in the undrained limit, this would be a scenario where uh, the pore pressure would not change. Because the fluid doesn't really diffuse, you don't take into consideration the fluid diffusion at all. Right? So again, this is our, this is my sponge with a membrane around it, or the undrained limit. Right? So if I squeeze that sponge with the membrane around it, obviously the presence of the pore fluid is going to affect the resistance my hand feels when I squeeze it, but the fluid can't escape. So there's no reason to, you know, in that sense, to really model. Uh, fluid diffusion, because right? it can't go anywhere. And so um, an actual scenario where you can approach the undrained limit would be fast loading on low permeability materials. Right? So an, an example would be like in hydraulic fracturing or in drilling of shales. In those cases, you're, you're approaching the undrained limit, okay, and the equations of pore elasticity reduce to special cases in that scenario because of that. So obviously, in, in shales are very low permeability, and diffusion is a very slow process, right? Um, and so, the rates at which we drill or hydraulically fracture are much faster than the rates of diffusion of in, in low permeability material. And therefore, in that case, uh, the pressure diffusion has very little effect on the response of the solid material. The drain limit is just the, the opposite scenario, right? So in the, in the, the drain limit is, is, my, uh, is a very, very permeable medium where uh, the pore pressure has very little effect on the solid skeleton because the material is, the, the fluid can diffuse away so fast, right? So again, if I have a very, very porous sponge and I squeeze it, whether it's full of water or, or drained of water, it doesn't have a lot of effect on the, on the solid, the response of the solid material, right? Uh, because when I squeeze it, all the water just flies out really quickly. And so that would, in, you know, an approximation of that would be very slow loading on very permeable media, right? So 
This would be like foot loading on a, on a saturated sand or something like that. So the load doesn't change very fast, uh, and the fluid has pl ample opportunity to diffuse away, then it's not going to affect uh, the deformation of the solid material very much. 